originally hailing from the Ukraine, studying at Berklee College of Music in Boston, coming out here to Los Angeles and winning a Grammy, Ruslan is truly the epitome of a career musician. What's the correct pronunciation of your name? Ruslan Sorota. As it looks on paper. Right. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Career Musician Podcast. This is your host, Nomad, and today I'm interviewing a very special musician, Ruslan Sirota. He's a piano player who has overcome trials and obstacles in his life. With limited resources, Ruslan was determined to make a way to practice his piano skills and learn as much about music as he possibly could. As you listen to Ruslan's story, you will soon understand what it takes to be a tried and true career musician with determination, perseverance, and self-motivation. I was born in the Soviet Union when it still existed, in the Communist Soviet Union, where I studied music and played by ear, um, which was a big no-no at the time. You're not supposed to play by ear in the Soviet Union. It was frowned upon, what are you, a street musician or something? Come on. Like, really? Oh, God, yeah, you're not, what is this? But, you know, when you're a kid, you don't know any better. I heard songs on the radio, and my dad's students would come by the house, and I would just pick things up, and I had a little bit of a relative pitch, so I would start playing songs, and my father loved it, and other musicians loved it, but it was like, there was always a question on the air, Where, when are you guys going to send him to study, you know, real music? Mm -hmm classical music and at the age of seven they did and I started studying proper classical music all the while playing by ear but my dad knew that this wasn't going to cut it this wasn't going to be you know I have this other side to me that's not just classical music so he found there was one guy in my town who was shunned and kicked out of all the institutions because he was listening to American music he was writing songs against the gov Soviet government he was improvising and he had a little Yamaha keyboard that was smuggled in across the border which wasn't legal I'm talking Soviet Union 1986 we're not talking contraband like drugs we're talking a keyboard, keyboard a Yamaha keyboard that's right not legal not supposed to be there wow my dad had the good sense to pay the guy to be my private teacher and hush hush so he would come by the house once a week and we would sit on the floor I was six years old and we would improvise he'd play me Earth, Wind and Fire he'd play me different music that he would they, and they recorded it from cassette to cassette to cassette to cassette to cassette because it's not that you couldn't go buy it you'd buy it in Czechoslovakia and have like a seventh copy of really yeah man it was a big it was great it wasn't a big deal to me at the time I was just a kid yeah, no, now was. looking at it looking back it was like it wasn't really cool you know and so and then I would go and pr play classical music and practice classical music but then right. me and this guy would meet once a week and make music and improvise and write which songs which was taboo in and of itself it was just frowned upon it was just not cool like it's not and he was a taboo he was kicked out of all the, he wouldn't they wouldn't take him as a teacher to anything because he hated the state he hated the government he hated the the constraints under which we were put by the regime and how everything was closed you couldn't get access to information to music and the guy's a musician okay he was, was a songwriter he had a little Yamaha key he just wants to write songs it's innately in him yeah, he just gotta get exactly. it out yeah, he yeah, was yeah. like a hippie he was walking around yeah. barefoot and so no one would mess with him because he was like he's like that guy the crazy musician anarchist guy against the state of which of course he wasn't he was just a normal person he couldn't he was suffocated so I studied with him for a while Dude, in secret and that and my classical training sort of laid the foundation from the get-go to you know for things to come I love it you know so so your dad had the foresight mm -hmm. to let you study with absolutely because he outcast that's story, right so because so he speak. knew uh, classical is not how I started I started playing by ear and picking up songs pick from up. the radio like well we have to do something with that right we're right. not gonna throw it out the window right right, right. amazing so. now the classical studies mm -hmm. did, were your folks also responsible as your dad yeah Absolutely. And how did uh, how does one start at seven years old from the, the Soviet Union? How oh, does one start uh, well, like everybody else, stand in line, be like everything I do. Here's the method. Here's the hard work. Here's what you need to do at home, and you better do it. And and very tough and rough, and, and no wow. questions asked. And this is the method, and it works. 
and shut up and do it. Just do it. And and you know, it, it's not always the worst method. I was brought up the same way. Yeah. And let me ask you this: How many hours a day were you practicing? Well, it varied from four to five to six to some. Yeah. When I was on recess, with <clears throat> sometimes less. Yeah. But then yeah. you know the classical stuff. I practice and practice and practice. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd still want to play more. You still want to play? Yeah. And then I play. So right. the guy's wife, the teacher, the guy's wife yeah, yeah. was a classical pianist. So I would study with both of them. I would go to their house, and she knew, but but she was his wife, so she didn't care. So she'd give me classical for, for an hour, and then nice. with him, next hour would be me and him making music, and that was my regiment, you know, for a while. It's crazy. That right? is truly amazing. You're listening to the Career Musician Podcast by Nomad. Repertoire, Rachmaninoff, Debussy. I mean, who yeah, we studied. We st- probably all the Haydn and Mozart stuff that was simpler right. for to start, and you know, probably uh, eventually progressing maybe to some Tchaikovsky later. I, I left Soviet Union when I was nine. This was this uh, was from compressed from six years, to almost three ten, three and a half. So then, when we moved to Israel when I was nine years old, there you go. Two things happened. All of a sudden, everything has to do with playing by ear and playing songs and all that stuff was no not a big deal anymore because we're in Israel. It's you know, it's the first world, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We have like, the Yamaha school of music. Yes. We had a, you know, every album that's ever came out, you can go buy. Yeah. Well, and then I continued my classical studies as well because I was only, what, 10 years old. So, and then like the little bit of, you know, the Chopin and the Debussy and the Rachmaninoff came and I continued playing classical, I think, until the age of 18. At which point, even before that, jazz took over. Is that 18 or 17? Right. Something like jazz started, you know, what started happening is it jazz seeps in, right? yeah, yeah, started yeah. taking over slowly. Slowly, slowly, and you know, you get puberty, all the hormones kick yes. in, and all of a sudden things start looking and feeling a little different, and music starts sounding different. But we're also craving harmonic freedom. Right. Isn't that why we turn to jazz? That's right. Right? Because in the classical, you have the complete constraints. You, you, right. Constraints, you, this yeah. is your harmonic That's structure. Right. That's it. That's right. Jazz, throw that out the window. Throw it out the window, right. Yes, but then what you find eventually is, again, freedom is within a framework, and you have That's to have right. the good the good sense to, to, to realize that. And then commitment is the path to adventure, essentially. Like when you can say, okay, here, when I focused on something, and then all of a sudden all this big freedom opens up. But I didn't, of course, know that at the time. But yes. I, I went there for the exact reasons that you just cited. I just right. want harmonic freedom. I want right. all the freedom. I want just, uh, just give it, you know. Something up. Yeah, and then... And, and I love the colors and I love this and I love that so you know and so I continued yeah. my studies eventually long story short I got a full ride to Berkeley ah. which was my ticket to this country and you were 17 18? I was 17 yeah wow. and I was super super lucky um, I got a full ride and I met this gentleman who really changed my life uh, his name is Gary Burton so Gary so basically paid Gary. my way through college for, because my parents couldn't afford to put me through it he like he just yeah I wouldn't be sitting here today or living in this country and my, my life played out in very really unpredictable ways and we'll probably get to some of that in terms of where I thought it was going right. and where it ended up going partially and partially here and partially there but Ooh. if it wasn't for his contribution and him you know really be, yeah. you know, being there for me in the most sort of essential way I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't even be able to use my full scholarship to Berkeley. It pays to be diversified. Ruslan Sirota definitely lives up to that when it comes to his resume. From artists like R&B crooner Brian McKnight to Seal pop star Josh Groban, classical crossover star, and jazz giants like Stanley Clark, Ruslan has been busy. So tell me a little bit about. Your resume, man. I mean, you've won a Grammy, and your resume is just brilliant. So please, mm. brag, brag, if you will. Brag, huh? <laughs> It's okay oh, to brag. Crap. Okay. <laughs> I've been waiting for this forever. <laughs> Truly, I mean, looking back, I've kind of had, a, like, the strangest career, really, in terms yeah. of the things that I had, you know, the good fortune to be involved with, in terms of the genre and sort of different styles of music. One of the reasons I moved to L.A. is that in 2005, the first sort of pop gig I ever had was Brian McKnight and Stanley Clark, who's a jazz artist. I was already on the gig. That was a big part of my life. Stanley played a huge part. So you were already with Stanley? I was already with Stanley and I got Brian's gig and I was 25 and I was like, you know what? 
I maybe I was thinking, should I go to New York? Should I go to Boston? Should I to LA? I was in Boston, yeah. I was touring. Yeah, yeah. Like you know what? Well, Stanley's in LA. Brian's in LA. <laughs> So maybe I'll I'm gonna that. move to LA because you know I want to keep the gigs. I want to stay working, and I, sure. I I don't want them to stress out and having to fly me out. <laughs> okay, that's a smart business move. Like we were you talking know. about business decisions. You know, yeah, we don't want to stress you out that's our right. employers. That's right. If you're an employee, you don't want to stress them out. Yeah. You're great, but there's other people who are great. That's you right. Know? <laughs> you're smart. not. There's never you know. And so I flew out here, and little did I know. Once you're here, it opens up sort of the Pandora box mm. for a bunch of other things. And I and I and I was living in my friend's studio on the couch for a month. And I got called to do an audition for Seal. After two rounds of audition, I got the gig. Wow! <laughs> Finally, I can move out and not live on the couch in my friend's studio in North Hollywood. I got a gig. I finally got a place, and since then, it's it's you know I've I've gotten the chance to sort of work with a bunch of folks. Uh, I was music director for Egg Benet. I played with Josh Groban for a while. Uh, Seal, like I said, Neo and Dan Warren. I worked with her for a little while, and then since you know on the on the jazzier side, uh, I was lucky to sort of still do Stanley stuff, and then get the chance to work with uh, with Marcus Miller and record with George Duke for some stuff and with Chicoria and a piano mm-hmm. duet. And just do different, you know, music for commercials and different kind of stuff like that. So I'm looking back at all the stuff I did. I'm like, man, I don't really even know what what sort of career right. this really is. Right. right. You know, because I, you know, I did, you know, the stuff for X Factor, and then and, and then from there I'd fly and do a gig with. You know, with Stanley or with or Stanley with someone like, or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like what? What the hell? Like, yeah. and so it was. It's been. It's been quite insane. But in see, to me, uh, Ruslan, that's that's the epitome mm. of what a true career musician is. Mm. Again, so that's what this is. This this is all about the career musician, the career of a musician. Right. Right. No. And totally. it's beautiful, isn't it? Totally. No, I agree a hundred percent. Because if you planned for it, mm-hmm. it wouldn't happen this way. Right. Right. And this is yeah. also something I think. Life often unfolds this way. Right. You know, when, when preparation meets opportunity, you don't. If you have all kinds of different preparations, you end up having all kinds of different opportunities, opportunities. and then you end up in all kinds of different situations. And then you can yeah. sit here over a drink and look back mm-hmm. and say, if if I had a business manager, who who could have ever hooked me up with Ooh. with that kind of salad of the, and, and 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 I honestly love all these different you right. know, genres of music. And if you, you know, I listen to all these for a couple. Of years for instance um in 2004 i think i only listened to gospel music Ah, so only you ever listened to gospel music, nothing else for two years, and played so you're nothing picking else. Picking up all that vernacular, absolutely. And I, I, I made it the point, like you know what, this is going to be, yeah, this is it. Like, and so that opened the door to a lot of other kind of work, uh, and the gospel circuit, the R and B circuit, because mm-hmm. uh, I was now, you know, that white guy <laughs> who do all that gets it, it like, kind it. of, sort of gets it, right? And I, I find myself in the same yeah, boat. It's a sort of and, gets it. It's not talk, really. Right, 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 it's like I always say that right. I can fake my way through that's it. That's right. Yeah. Uh, talking about harmonic freedom, that's funny. Yeah. Gospel harmony. Don't you think you can devote a lifetime to Absolutely. just studying that? Uh, the deeper I got into it, the more I realized. Like It was a really funny thing to witness. On the one hand, I felt myself getting more and more proficient in the language right. and acknowledged more and more for it. And the further down that success line, I, the further up, rather, the more sort of the picture opened for me, the more I realized that I will never sound like this. It's so funny. I came to that same realization and I kind of slowed the brain yeah too. <laughs> me too eventually because I realized look exactly. when you can call Isaiah Sharkey right just fucking just call, call him, him yeah because the guy is so brilliant at yeah, what he does exactly I can't do that absolutely you know? yeah. I know exactly what you yeah. mean yeah. and so it opens it's good to have that and not just for a career I mean it's beautiful stuff like forget the gigs forget the phone calls right it's just the music is the awesome the music is gorgeous and, yes. then, and then yes the phone calls too yeah, right. and the gigs sure right. and but, the culture that goes yeah, with it. I mean, it's just so dense. It's That's so much. Not, absolutely. For a good couple of years, I played in church three, four times a week. You know, and that was a big schooling for me. And I really, and I don't think you can get music fully without getting the culture. That's right. So to the little hum, 
humble extent that I was able to go, I've gone deep as I sort of could being where I'm a Ukrainian kid from Israel. Okay, I'm not, I wasn't awesome. cut for any of this. Those guys, you know, to hear them play ah. for, you know, quite some years of my life, I spent trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. Oh, wow. And it would sit them down and like, oh, show me this show and show me, me that. And, 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 and that was a trip. And yeah, eventually what happens is you kind of reach full circle with it because it's, it, it is a trip you take. That's right. You know, there is you after all of what you're actually made of and what cultural and aesthetic blueprint right. happens to be. It sounds like you've been through a similar process. It, it, yeah. Identical. So for me, I, I, I eventually understood like, okay, this is amazing. Like it, it happened very naturally. I sort of started yes. gravitating back sort of to, you know, what I'm... Let me come back to who, to I, who am I am as an individual. Right. right? But the, the interesting part is you never come back the same. Right. There you, you go. Come back because that imprinted you. That's that right. influenced you. That's right. Eternity. On every level. And, uh, on every conscious level. and unconscious. Yes. And you, you never come back the same. And you, I came back with a lot more sensitivity and a lot more, like, my placement changed when now that I was playing. Because, like, with the gospel stuff, like, their quote-unquote competition is playing the right thing at the perfect time. Perfect time. Right. right. That's what they compete. And for the spotlight for, for singer. The, that's right. That's for, right. For the, the, the exactly. Spotlight, the so if you, if you try to do that for a while in any genre, say, yeah. in their genre, you're going to end up doing that now in all genres yeah. that you're going to play. It's not a genre thing. It's just like, oh, does it's this fit here? Yes. Does this not fit here? Yes. And then you, when you play rock and roll on, a, on, on the B3 organ, you ask the same question, playing rock music. Right. Well, does this fit well, here? Is this okay? And right. now, well, yeah. And, and so you, know, you don't come back the same. And, you know, so that was a really... Uh, pardon the pun, but amen to that. <laughs> amen to that. <laughs> That old myth, jack of all trades, master of none, is just that. It's a myth. If you consciously plot out your daily practice regimen and take as many different gig opportunities as possible, I can almost guarantee that you will enjoy an exciting path filled with all kinds of opportunity. When I look back what I was listening to as a kid, it kind of makes sense because growing up in Israel, there was MTV, right? With all the R&B, well, back, you know, then, well, then there the was... Well, then R&B was blown That's up. right, that's Huge. right. Yeah. It was on television and it had cool chords. Yeah. And then, so I was listening to all that stuff because it was cool. I was like, oh, the look. gospel chords. And the gospel like the chords. R&B yeah, yeah, they, they were like pretty chords to me. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. what chords there were. And so, you know, everything from the Mariah Carey stuff from Boys to Men and, and Brian McKnight at the hey, time. Hey, a minor nine is a minor nine. A minor nine still sounds beautiful, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. So I was digging that then but then I was listening to uh, I don't know Chick Corea I was listening to Pat Metheny and I was listening to uh, George Benson I was listening to Keith Jarrett so all the stuff that I was digging as a, as a when you're sort of homegrown and isolated from a should and the, and, and, a, and, and like you should listen to this should listen to that you you really realize that you don't really your taste doesn't fit at least that was my case. My yeah. taste never fit. When left to our own devices, when left alone, uh, without sort of being told what you should and shouldn't absorb, right. you'd be surprised uh, where you end up. You know, I know this is not just my story. I know there's right. plenty of people out there. Yeah. And so when I grew up, it actually, you know what? It, it actually adds up that I'm doing all this different stuff right. because I, I, I like all this different stuff and I and I uh, I enjoy you know all these different styles of music. Right. So and, and so I was kind of fortunate to end up, you know, playing a bunch of them. Speaking of having that diverse taste mm. and desire to touch on everything mm -hmm. and really truly being a fan of all these things. I'm in the same exact boat. Oh, I know. know. So, however, like you said, there's no, we didn't have a schematic right. that we were following. Mm -hmm. It kind of made itself up as yeah. we went along. However, mm -hmm. There's tried and true principles and methods. Right. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, principles never change. That's right. Methods do. Right. Right? Right. So That's what right. what is the principle or principles that you adhere to? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the methods that you, you know, enforced in your own life? Yeah. yeah. What did you do? To, because you don't reach this level of musicianship by being undisciplined. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Here, I think, I think there's a big clue that we have to kind of jump on very quickly. Your taste and what you love in music is a good sort of north star to help you navigate through, you know, what you are here to do. I try to study the things I love. I love them for a reason. I probably resonate. There's probably something that is me 
that's in those things. Mm. You know, I recognize myself in certain musics and certain songs and certain that's what makes you love something you see something of your own your part of your soul is in that music and you say ah that's me there you go okay well if that's you go reconnect uh, go and and you go and study that that's right so i think that's a, that's a that's, that's a, a principle that's, that's a principle yes well you like this okay you should be able to play it you should go play it devour yeah, it exactly yeah. you like that okay well now do that now do I the do same thing with thing. that I think that's that's a safe bet. I agree. It's also very practical because we're talking about music that you like already. Mm. So you will want to sit on your ass <laughs> and put the, put the time in because you're, it's not like you're doing you're you're trying to check out stuff that someone's forcing you to do. You already mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. so it all kind of adds up. Right. You know. That's right. It, it's stuff you already like. You'll be happy to sit and check yeah. it out. But then maybe right. try playing it half step up. You know, for right. a piano player, maybe try to do that. Right. Maybe try to play it, you know, um, with both hands. Both or, hands. Or, or try to see, okay, do you see the chord changes of the song? Is there something we can learn? Oh, I see. That's, yeah, this chord goes to this. So wow. the voice leading. Oh, right. see. How about I take just those two chords and try to play them like a step up, now half step up, half step up, and, 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 and like three more keys? Because that's a cool passage here that I really like. Now you're employing your methods. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's always good to start uh, from something you love and let that be the pool from which you fish and then there's probably going to be a lot to fish from there it still works you still have to sort of sit down right. and figure stuff out but yeah once exactly then the method comes in okay yeah. well now this is cool well why don't i extract this one f for a second right. and try to run it in a couple different scenarios and situations yeah. musically and maybe see what it does to my playing a month later you know Listen, that old myth, jack of all trades, master of none, is just that. It's a myth. If you consciously plot out your daily practice regimen and take as many different gig opportunities as possible, I can almost guarantee that you will be an extremely versatile career musician and enjoy an exciting path filled with all kinds of opportunity. You're listening to the Career Musician Podcast by Nomad. And I don't want to hear you complain, oh, but what about G flat? No, oh, no, 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 especially G flat. Especially G that's flat, right. because that's Be the hardest that's right. one. <laughs> you know? Of course, of course. It's pretty old school. It's pretty it sort is. of ruthless. And it also the, the culture I come from, it had no jazz in it, but it has, uh, had a lot of methods like that in it. When right. I was a kid, I would try to practice a passage. Yeah. I had a, it's pretty, actually, don't try this at home. It's actually <laughs> terrible. But, but I'd have a box of matches. Uh-oh. And every time I play the passage correctly, yeah. I, I'd empty the box, right? Okay. Empty, like, every time I played the passage correctly, I put one match into the box. And then I play another time of the passage. If I do it correctly, I put them another match into the box. And then I do it again. And when I mess up, all the matches come out. All of them? <laughs> yeah. When I was 17, 16, this is how I was practicing class. Are you serious? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> It's not that's good. I intense. don't recommend it because that's not good because what happens you can burn yourself out and like yeah. stop practicing. But right. yeah, there's also room for a little bit of that. Again, I don't think yeah. it's necessarily very healthy, but it will that's produce results. It will that's, produce results. Yes. That's extreme. It's like when yeah. you're talking about pure freedom isn't really freedom mm -hmm. because if you take a child and never send them to school. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're probably not going to learn the fundamentals That's that right. they need to. How would they? Yeah. How would they, right? Mm. But they're going to love that freedom until one day they realize, wait a minute, this was too much freedom. That's right. So how do you find that balance? So perhaps what you're, that method yeah. is a little far right. Yeah, and I think what you're insinuating, it yeah. works the other way around, too. Right. At some point, after doing that, I kind of burnt myself out. And I'm like, oh, God, this is too much. Too much. But even, you know, I come from this, maybe it's a cultural thing, like, you know, it's the Soviet sort of thing. I yes. have that sort of in me, yes. a little bit of that kind of... Mm, that stoic yeah, determination, man. It, it gives, stern... And, and there's, a, there's a downside yes. to it as it burns you out. It, it also is unbalanced. So I have to say, though, Studying Spartan culture, you know, uh, recently I, I signed up for my first Spartan race. I'm, oh my I'm God. excited, right? Really? Yeah. So just reading about their culture and, and their principles and methods, like we're talking wow. about, 
there's something to be said for it. Yeah. Because let's say Ar- let's say some form of Armageddon happens, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Who are you, how are you going to survive? Yeah. Well, Who's going to survive? That's the right. The person that complains about sitting in traffic? That's right. No. No, of course not. The person who can roll with anything that's thrown their way? They're going to survive. Most likely survive. You know. I, I remember. I remember when when um, Seth MacFarlane was talking about was giving a speech before the elections, and he had a line that I really liked. Like, how do you decide what do you need now? He said, if the soup is too salty, add water. If the soup is too watery, add salt. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about our political system, but yeah, I think sure, it's a really sure. good it's a really good method. It's like yes. so how do you find the balance? So come on, so realistically, um, let's be honest. Or maybe have right. a good friend to help you to, to, as to, a to be on the right yes. or or a coach or a, yes. or a mentor, mentor or right. or a shrink. I don't care. Something yeah, that's anybody. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Is the soup too fine salty? Fine. Right, right. Is the soup too watery? Right. For most of our listeners and for you and I, for most people, I think, anywhere, yeah. usually the soup will either be too watery or too salty. Too salty. Yeah. For right. most people, and by most I mean probably eight or nine out of ten. It's right. really hard to strike that balance, to, and of course, to get that perfect. Yeah, one. yes. And if you're not, even within the salty, it, if it's too salty, it could be way too salty, or just a little just too a little salty. Too. Right, so there's like <laughs> variation there too. But Variations within, right, each. within each. So it's really important to sort of stay on track, uh, and don't let me fool you into thinking that I, uh, in, in any really way, <laughs> that's right, on, on methods figured out how right. to do it. I, I am right. not at all. You know, I, some weeks I, I feel pretty good right. about the balance. Right. Some other weeks, um, I get neurotic. Uh, yes. I'll go overboard one way or another. But. Hailing from the Ukraine, studying at Berklee College of Music in Boston, ending up here in Los Angeles, and winning a Grammy, Ruslan is truly the epitome of a career musician. And, and let me just interject here mm-hmm. from my perspective. Mm-hmm. I believe it's so important for aspiring career musicians that if you want to make a career out of being a professional mm-hmm. musician, what we call a side man, mm-hmm. right? side mm-hmm. person, mm-hmm. so to speak, I think the knowledge that we have from our experience, we can pass along in this way that will be most effective. Try to be decisive mm-hmm. at an early point. Oh, God. Why didn't you tell me that 15 years ago? Exactly, <laughs> Russell. So, so, so imagine this. I always knew I was an artist. I was playing Beatles songs on the yeah. organ mm-hmm. and, and when I was 10 mm-hmm. in the basement. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, when I picked up the guitar and then realized, oh, I have a natural propensity mm-hmm. and I gravitated toward it and I learned that I can make a living out of it, the artistry thing faded, 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 faded. Now I'm a professional career musician. That's right. But now where does the artist go? To the right. back seat. Oh, man, yeah. I am challenging up-and-coming career musicians to make a decision oh, God. now. That is so true, man. If you're going to be an artist, I want so you to decide true. right now. And listen to me. I want you to be content with starving. That's right. If you are going to be an artist, right. you better fucking be That's cool right. with starving. Because right. guess what? You're going to starve. Yeah. Or it's very likely. And there's a quote that I actually I really like. Uh, that This is something I, we can get into that. It took me a while to sort of figure out what, what I'm doing with, with that myself. Yeah. It's like, if you don't know where you're going, any road will lead you there. Exactly. If you don't know where you're going, any road will lead you there. That's such an important point. And I, I wish I could tell you that I'd figured it out. <sighs> Me too. A long time ago. I haven't. That's why I'm here now. Right. Because like, maybe please. we could tell yes. our old That's Michaels right. and Russell right. and smack in the That's head. right. Listen to me. Please take this. Which one is it? Yeah. Yes. Which one is it? Now, career musicians, I respect that too. Mm-hmm. Now, there's oh guys God, who me. just want to be career mm-hmm. musicians. And that were the most amazing career guys. <laughs> yep. And uh, and still to this day are. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that's uh, very important. Absolutely. So, you know. I think following your, your your calling, there's a book. It's called Managing Yourself, and it, it, I really re- recommend it. It's great. It, it talks about number one in the organization, number two in the organization, right. and how a lot of times what happens when the number one, when the CEO, he, he has this advisor, number two guy, right? The advisor often is the one who determines the strategy he's the number two but he's always in the ear of the number one guy that's right but but check this out what happened everybody knows this in the organization then the number one gets a stroke or dies and of course who is going to be the number one now the number two and the organization starts failing Mm -hmm. no nose diving and the stats go down 
Right. Interesting, like, isn't it? Why, why are you f- failing our company? Everything that brought us to success were mostly your ideas. Ah, it was not the combination. That's right. Two. That's right. There, the, now there needs to be certain audacity, certain level of like having certain goals to right. implement certain things right. that the number two might not have. Maybe the number two's guy's imagination to fly and think strategy can only be free when he knows that it's not going to be his ass on the line implementing it. The number one the number is going to have to, to take, take responsibility. Charge. Yes. So, uh, so why am I saying this? A sideman artist. That's it. Uh, there's that more to being so an artist difficult. than just being really talented oh. and really able to even capture a crowd. That's okay? right. That's not it's enough not. either. No, it's not. That's not. It's more to that. Yes, the, in the organization, the number two guy was always making the, a lot of the decisions because the number one guy knows that he needs that help. He needs that advice. Mm. But once mm. the number two guy became number one, what's happening? Why is the company not working? Uh, it turns out it just it's more than just than just having whatever the right ideas, which the number That's two it. guys has had for years. That's it. Turns out it's more. Yeah. And I'm learning this the hard way because you know, I'm making my second record is done now, and I'm like, man, and I'm still sort of you know. I, I decided sort of to take the plunge, and uh, but I'm learning. I'm learning the hard way. It literally, th- this is why a lot of times you see musicians who are famous artists, who are famous instrumental artists or singers, they don't necessarily have the highest level of musicianship. And you complain and say, well, wait, why the hell? I know guys that are so much better. And all this complaining is, is a profound misunderstanding of what it actually requires to be a front to man. To be the front man. Yeah. That's it. When you sit and you say, well, this person is less good of a whatever trumpet player or yeah, whatever or than my buddy here yeah. that teaches at whatever UCLA yeah. or plays at this bar. When you say that about the musicianship, you are correct. Indeed, your buddy has right. a higher level of musicianship. Right. But if it puzzles you as to why it's this guy that's on stage and not your buddy, it only shows that your profound misunderstanding that's of right. what it actually is to be a front guy. That's right. And what a small piece of the puzzle it is. That's right. To just be great and and play your small instrument. Piece. What a small piece of the puzzle that is and the grand scheme of things. Make your decision what, now. Make your decision now. It's <laughs> yeah. a, I always uh, attribute business acumen as one mm-hmm. of the biggest mm-hmm. things. You know, it's like well, if you're not responsible, you're not organized, mm-hmm. uh, you're, if you're not meeting your commitments, That's right. even for a meeting like this, there's no money exchanging here. What we're doing is we're exchanging ideas and mm-hmm. concepts and we're helping each other's Absolutely. brands develop, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But yet, you still checked in with me and said, hey, are we still on for tomorrow? I said, absolutely, absolutely. 2 p.m. Mm-hmm. Now, how many musicians do you know? Oh, man, yeah, I got, oh, I can't make it. I got, I forgot. I double booked this thing. Right. You see, you see what I'm saying? Well, look. Or how many guys you know that just wouldn't even show up? Right. Yeah. Well, the, the, the way you, know? you do, the way you do anything is the way you do everything, right? Well said. You, I, well I wish said. I could take credit for no, this. No, I like so it. So I try. I try. I I think it very quickly bites you in the ass. It does. Whether you are yes. a solo artist and what you just brought up there, it's this is not even a matter of having a solo career. No, I mean, you can't. Just, any, you can't keep anything if you're it. that way. So you win a Grammy and then you can't get a gig. How's that for Murphy's Law? Remember, life is not a destination, but a journey. Let's try to remember this as we encounter struggles and daily trials as career musicians. Tell me about these series that you're doing on online yeah. where you're, you're doing covers. To, right. Meanwhile, right. So yeah, while I'm working on this record stuff, meanwhile, I was like, you know what? I'm kind of, you know, I want to make more music. And me and my, my production partner, Jan Perchek, we were like, well, we want to make more music. We want to do more stuff. So what can we do? So we started doing little covers of pop songs with a string quartet and a jazz rhythm section. Nice. And that's always fun. It's just been, at some point you realize, you know what? Money, no money. Like I've done it, been there, done there, got the t-shirt. I just want to create gotta do something I yes. want to create I want to stay creative and like it's like it's that, that's the one thing 
I want to. So we said, why don't we take some of these pop songs and 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 see if we can, you know, win. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm seeing just... I mean, some of them. You have you know five thousand, six thousand views, eleven thousand. You, you, you're doing you, you, fifty four thousand. It's an, 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 you're doing another, well. We're doing. It's it's yeah. We're gonna keep keep making more of these. And, right. It's content not, is king. That's right. right? It's you not cost keep. effective. It's costing me <laughs> an arm and a leg with all these strings. I'm like, oh right. god. Right. But you know, it's sometimes you just have to say, you know, it's screw it. You know, like, I want to make music. And you have listen. You're in, you're a musician you're supposed to make music that's what you're here for you I love what you just said I've been there done that got the t-shirt like, I just want to create I want to make music if you don't yeah if you don't continue making music you will be stifled, that's right, right that's right yeah. that's right so always in, in some ways I, I have a tendency to, to, to be a little too extravagant with, with, with production and strings and all that stuff I'm paying a price for it <laughs> but you know but you know maybe I'll do something on a smaller scale but I, I'm not gonna stop creating I, I want to keep creating Creating, or we'll do some more of these. We actually have the next batch working on, you know, right now. Absolutely, wow. the strings, arrangements are written. It's all done. Oh, that's beautiful. So, you know, I want to keep going. Incredible. Absolutely, Russell. Thank you so thank much you so for much, being Russell. a guest. I'm so excited, man. Thank you for having me. What a great conversation. Thanks to Russell, an amazingly talented musician and equally spectacular human being. Content is king. And collaboration is key. This is truly a motto that I try to keep in mind. Thanks for tuning in. I am your host, Nomad. Here's looking forward to the next episode of the Career Musician Podcast. Throughout this episode, you've heard some of Ruslan's music as underscore. These are pieces taken directly from his various projects, with his permission, of course. Check out his website, ruslanmusic.com, to hear more. All of his social media is available via the website links, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And once again, thank you for joining me on another episode of the Career Musician Podcast. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe everywhere online. And do me a favor, please leave a review. It'll help spread the word to get these awesome interviews heard. If you've enjoyed today's interview, subscribe to the Career Musician Podcast. Follow Nomad's Place on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. I'm just a nomad, nowhere man. Writing the songs in this one man band. I know man, yeah. I'm no man, Drummers! So you're watching an amazing drummer on YouTube, and they're playing something so crazy, you just can't figure it out. If only you can tap this drummer on the shoulder and say, hey, can you slow it down and break it down for me, man? PossibleChops.com does exactly that. They've asked some of the the top-of-the-line drummers to play in short, digestible phrases some of their craziest chops. Then they slow it down and transcribe it so you can actually learn what the heck they're doing. They're making chops possible. Now, PossibleChops.com is an online drum lesson website that makes it easy to add to your drumming vocabulary from some of the baddest professional drummers. And when I say baddest, I mean the dopest, illest, most ridiculousest drummers you ever heard. Imagine getting a breakdown from drummers who played with the likes of Usher, Earth, Wind & Fire, Chick Corea, Babyface, Sheryl Crow, 
Tony Braxton, and the list goes on. The PossibleChops.com community is designed to allow drummers to share ideas and help you on your path to becoming a pro and getting gigs. That's right, folks, actually getting real gigs. If you're serious about drumming, do yourself a favor and visit PossibleChops.com. Join today and basic membership is free. However, if you decide to upgrade to a pro membership, use the promo code NOMAD to get your first free month. That's right, folks. Use coupon code NOMAD and you get the whole first month absolutely free. Adding new chops are now made possible for drummers on PossibleChops.com. 